afternoon. <clears throat> just had a quick lunch and things have just been bouncing like crazy today. Here is something that I thought might be of interest to people who have done certain, well, this would be a gigger job. Although probably originally it wasn't even considered a job. And now suddenly you're getting held to have had this job. Let me explain. Uh, one of the major retail sellers um, begins with an A, um, has a Z in it. Um, they have this thing. I don't know if they still do. They probably, st yeah, they do. They do still do actually. Um, product reviewing. They might not be the only company do that does that. And it seems like a great um, fun thing to do. And some people were doing it back when it was, um, you know, the product is books, review books, you know. Um, so an individual who was, in addition to the full-time job back before, you know, disability was a twinkle in the eye, uh, as a hobby, would review books, get sent a book a month. Uh, they would, I think they paid you at that time, maybe like 12 bucks for the review. And there would be maybe a total of 12 books for the year because it was maybe a book a month. This is my understanding. Don't hold me to any particular detail because I'm hearing it uh, secondhand. And later on, the company started adding more products to review. So they can, have, so that you, you know, people who want to buy the product can see all the, the reviews of it. Um, so individual, again, doing this kind of as a hobby, you can review, you know, a wrench set or, you know, they started adding, there wasn't a lot of products. I don't think in the beginning, you know, the manufacturer has, has to be willing to put up some freebies, I suppose, um, to go out to reviewers. Uh, so people would review and then you don't get paid, but you can keep the used product after you're done reviewing it. Obviously some things that you might review have zero value because it's been expired. Uh, if it was a food for instance, um, or anything else that would expire, other things would just be used items now. Um, so they may or may not have some tiny little reuse sale, uh, reuse, reusable value, um, Sometime in the years after, let's say the mid-teens, there ended up being 1099s that were now issued after uh, the company determined what the value of the used goods that are not being returned, that are being retained, kept, or disposed of by the reviewer person who was doing this for a hobby, obviously. Um, the value of that would now be considered payments and a 1099 for that pay those payments such that they are now earnings uh, would issue every year. I want to say that started in 2016. Don't hold me to it. I just have reasons for thinking it might have. So a few years later, the person stops due to disabilities, um, can't do full-time work anymore. Rather robust robust work at the time, three years. And as you know, you have to do a work history report, usually on initial, supposed to be on initial. And uh, the claimant put the most recent W-2 job, that full-time career job down, uh, put down the job prior to that, and also put down this part-time hobby slash job um, that, you know, probably amounts to about 10 minutes a day if you were to average it out, maybe an hour a week. If it's a week, you actually, you know, some weeks you don't obviously do anything. Um, put it down because, you know, over the past years now, they'd suddenly been getting 1099s and were taxed on it. So the right thing to do, I think, you know, it's not for a claimant to decide whether that was considered past relevant work. So put it in so the SSA can figure it out. Okay. So now the, the product reviewing still goes on to this day. You know, it's one of those sporadic things, but when they charge you in the 1099 for the products, it can be a few thousand dollars. Nothing, you know, at least not for this person, remotely close to SGA. Um, but you know, it it is a few thousand. So the question now is, and this just came up, uh, the money is clearly from the time they issued 1099s, clearly not SGA. 
But remember, the, the SSA has to determine if any of your prior work in the last 15 years was PRW, prior relevant work. If it was prior relevant work, one of the questions in the sequential process will be, can she do her pro any of her prior occupations that, that fall within prior relevant work? So to be prior relevant work, it has to be SGA. Now we know the 1099s evidence that from 2016 forward, there was no SGA, but there is no 1099s for the prior. However, we know that there was even less products available. The person was working full time. And for the first several years, it was only books. It was, like I said, if it's $12 a month for one book, that's $144 for the year, clearly under SGA. Um, and the fact that the product reviewing that started of actual other products was in its infancy um, shortly thereafter, you know, by the time the person got to say $3,000 in 2016, prior to that, it was likely 3000 or less. Um, I understand that's the definite recollection. Um, and it also seems to jive with common sense and what was going on with the company at that time. So, uh, it is at the DDS level and the DDS needs to know, and I get they need to know this, you know, it's just an interesting, it's never come up this way before. Um, I was actually contacted by the field office because the DDS contacted them. I don't know why they didn't contact me. Um, they did try to go circumvent me and go great, right to my client, which is a no, no in my book. Um, but, you know, I speak with this client regularly and we'd already gone, we'd actually already prepared an 820 an SSA 820 just for clarifying this work if it was needed. I never got a request for it, um, but they probably should have. Anywho, um, so now we have to, my, my thought is they need clarification to find out if this self-employment work of being a product reviewer is, is SGA and can be counted as prior relevant work, which then they would have to decide, can he do it or not do it? Because you have to get through step four of not being able to do any of your prior relevant work to move to step five. Okay, so they, to test for SGA, I believe they're gonna be looking at the, um, it's the three tests that they do for someone um, who has not been on I think I'm going to sneeze in a minute, guys. Has not been on. I hate holding it in. Um, but sometimes you got. I'm just going to try to see if I can find that. Uh, have the palms up here. Yeah. Okay. So the three tests under the general evaluation criteria, which I believe would apply to him because he has not yet achieved benefits. Test one, uh, I'm going to read these and they're all going to sound kind of weirdly similar. Significant services and substantial income. The individual's work activity is SGA, if he's a self-employed person, if she renders services that are significant to the operation of the business and if she receives from it a substantial income. Well, I think we knocked that one out because the money's in terms of the pro the used products that you got to retain, whether you continue to use it or you toss it because you found it useless. Who knows? Maybe you had a bad review for it. Um, that's clearly not going to be substantial income. So I would think that would be a big, he passes that test. Does she pass test number two, which is comparability of work activity? The individual's work activity is SGA if, in terms of all relevant factors, such as hours, skills, energy output, efficiency, duties, and responsibilities, it is comparable to that of an unimpaired individual in the same community engaged in the same or similar businesses as their means of livelihood. Clearly, the hours, skills, energy, all of that is not comparable to unimpaired individuals engaged in similar businesses. Largely because of the fact that it was maybe, um, you know, five minutes a day on average. Um, and that's if you put it all together, because I don't think it was a daily thing. I think it was like maybe once a week, you got your product in and you tried it out and then you wrote your review. 
So I can't imagine that failing. Test three, worth of work activity. The individual's work, individual's work activity is SGA if, although not comparable to that of an unimpaired person, and keep in mind, this person was not impaired at the time. This is how far back we're going. It is nevertheless clearly worth more than the amount shown in the SGA earnings guidelines. Um, in this case, clearly not. There's nothing to indicate any of this is worth. It's not even worth what they're getting charged with on their 1099, obviously. Um, when considered in terms of its effect on the business or when compared to the salary an owner would pay an employee for such duties in that business setting. Um, yeah, I, I don't think so. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Um, I think people would rather take the cash. Um, but in any event, that is the three tests under the general evaluation criteria. Um, and again, they indicate SGA determinations for self-employed individuals will be based on either the general evaluation criteria, which consists of the three tests, or when applicable, applicable the countable income test. Use the countable income test, we didn't use it, to evaluate work in self-employment performed by a Title II disability beneficiary. This person's not she's a claimant, after she has received Title II disability benefits for 24 months or more, if the purpose of the evaluation is to determine whether disability has ceased due to SGA. So in all these other cases, it's those three tests I just mentioned. So if you find yourself falling into this boat, and now that these 1099, 1099 NECs, non-employment compensation, are coming out from these companies, uh, and it's funny, I think it's non-employment or non-employee compensation. Um, that's going to be your test. And if they don't, if they see that you were doing this because you were, you know, properly honest on your work history report, um, and I think you always should be, um, it really shouldn't be a problem uh, if you're doing such minimal stuff as what I've just described, which many people are. It's, it was definitely considered hobby business. Um, and pardon me on that. That's probably my hoagie. Anywho, um, I just wanted to share that because that is now I have to help him um, draft up a certified statement, SSA 795. That's going to be my strategy. I've had a I've had a um, a video on the value of the SSA 795. I use them whenever needed. They're amazing um, to put out the facts as he recalls them. Um, and they certainly comport with the realities of the day. And they are certainly um, not inconsistent with his subsequent 1099 uh, earnings of the used products from 16 and on. Except in reality, 16, uh, 15 and before would be less even. So just wanted to share that with you because I know there's a lot of people that do this kind of stuff. And it seems like fun. I've actually thought about doing it because I like to do interesting things. But uh, I don't think I'm going to now if they're going to charge me or Uncle Sam is for me literally just doing the favor of sorts. Um, maybe the company should be charged for sure. But I think it's kind of sad that someone's getting charged this way. Anyway, I'll talk to you later, guys. That was one of the big things today. <laughs> I have another one. It'll come out probably later. Bye.